I got convicted this morning, and let me tell you why. I went out to have dinner in conversation with someone last night who I love dearly. But I was in a place where I shouldn't have been. The enemy tried to distract me. Now, luckily, I had discernment enough to know that I was uncomfortable and I felt kind of weird. And when I spoke to my husband about it, I didn't realize what God was trying to tell me in that moment. But this morning when I woke up, it all hit me like a ton of bricks. And this is why the Holy Spirit is so amazing. And this is why when you marry somebody, make sure that they are your greatest asset. Because as I was telling my husband about my night last night, it didn't really dawn on me anything serious. And he didn't really comment too much on it. He just listened. But my husband is a praying man. And I know that he prays for me. And you know what? I believe that him and his prayers for me, they give me revelation eventually. And it causes me to see things the way that Christ would see things. Because... I am a Christ follower and I want to be more like Christ. But sometimes I put myself in situations or I find myself in situations where the enemy is trying to be distracting. Because let's be honest, you can still believe in the Bible, believe in God, trust the Lord and still be distracted by the enemy. Because the enemy still wants to kill, steal and destroy. Okay, that's his job. It never changed. My conviction was... I found myself in a place where I was uncomfortable, a place that I wasn't in agreement with, but I still stayed because I was with another person that I loved, that I was in conversation with, that I was comfortable with, and so I just adapted to my surroundings. Now, I didn't do anything overtly bad or sinful. But I started to think, disobeying God, even when you don't know it, is still sin. I mean, right? And so this morning I'm thinking, as I'm growing in my walk with Christ, as I'm learning these things, as I'm getting convicted about certain things, as I speak to my husband about certain things and I get a little bit offended with his answers when I ask him certain questions, maybe I need to do a heart check on myself. Because my intentions may be good, but my heart posture may be a little out of whack. And that's a hard pill to swallow, especially when you really believe that you are like, you're you're just like okay i'm <laughs> i'm totally getting it i'm understanding what the bible says but what happens when you understand what the bible says but you don't do exactly what the bible says even though you know that it's the best thing for you it can go one or two ways you can learn something good from it and grow or you can learn from it and just be like i don't care and completely ignore it altogether i'm not choosing to ignore it because God didn't choose to ignore me. God loves me enough to convict me. And I love God enough to realize when I have done something or been in a place where it's like, mm, that wasn't a good representation of Christ. So how can I do better next time? What can I say? Where can I be? How can I represent Christ better? And I think the first step to that, obviously, is understanding, is understanding where you are in your walk with the Lord and understanding what causes you distraction. Another thing is knowing how to pick your spouse because let me tell you, my husband is my greatest asset. My greatest asset. And ladies, if you have a husband that is not going to take your crap, that is not going to take your pushback on what you might think is right, because maybe what you're doing is not bad, but is it godly? Are you being led by the spirit? Or are you being led by your flesh? And that causes for submission, not only to the Holy Spirit, but also to your husband. And we don't like that word submission as women, but listen, it is the best thing for you. God set it up that way, so it can't be to harm you. I can go on and on.
on a whole tangent, probably like an hour video. But what I would like to propose to you is when you find yourself in an area, when you find yourself in conversation where the Holy Spirit and flesh are really like trying to battle each other or you feel it like this doesn't seem right, it probably isn't right. And then I would propose that you think about what does the word say about this? Because I promise you, if you look in the Bible, there's going to be instruction for basically anything. There's nothing new under the sun. And this isn't to say that every little thing that you do that doesn't exactly line up with the Bible, you should be trying to feel shame about. It's just presenting to you that, hey, we are Christ followers. We are supposed to represent Christ. What is the best way we can represent him? Is this the right room to walk into? Are these the right words to use? Is this the right emotion to lean into? Because our emotions have a lot to do with it as well. Anyway, I'm still kind of like going through this realization. But I just wanted to come on here and speak most of it out of what I felt. So there's that.